Conferences Online Allergy from Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics in Kansas City, Missouri. Today is October 31st, 2016, and I'm your host, Dr. Jay Portnoy. Our topic today, Immunology, Chapter 1. Our presenter is Dr. Nikita Raji. She's an assistant professor in the Division of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology at Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri. one today, but basically we are going to kind of build on whatever we already um, worked on from film Iraq. So today's chapter is pretty short and pretty much um, just a repetition of what we have already heard. So let's see if you guys have any questions that you know. So just the properties and overview of immune response. We're going to go through types of immunity and types of immune responses and their cardinal features and things like that. So, so what's an immune response? It's a reaction to the components of microbes, as well as it doesn't have to be a microbe if there is a macromolecule like protein or polysaccharide or even small cell chemicals, which are recognized as foreign. So that's the basic thing. The immune system has to come across something that's foreign, and then it's going to react to it, which is going to be immune response. Whether it causes a physiological or pathological consequence depends on what what the substance is uh, that it reacts to. All right, so um, here's a picture showing innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. And pretty much the big basic difference is the innate immune system is ready to go and act pretty quickly within hours compared to adaptive immune system, which takes time and days together before it can react. So what are the differences? We're going to go over each one. Um, but base, basic thing I would focus here is each, each of the immune system has different components. So there are cellular and chemical barriers in, in innate immunity that's formed by the skin and the mucosal epithelia and some of the antimicrobial molecules that are in that, uh, in that structure. Versus the adaptive immune system also has some lymphocytes in the epithelium uh, as well as there are some antibodies that are secreted at epithelial surface which are different from what's in the systemic circulation. There are some blood proteins, so for innate immune systems, something like complement um, versus antibodies for the adaptive immune system. And then you know about the cells, so phagocytes, natural killer cells, innate lymphoid cells, or something called ILCs are uh, for innate immune system and the lymphocytes for adaptive immune system. And we'll go over their characteristics in a minute. Um, and this basically is just showing those complements here. Um, so, um, so the other uh, molecule is something called cytokines. So what are cytokines? These are secreted proteins with diverse structures and functions. And they can be a part of innate immune system or adaptive immune system. And they regulate and coordinate the activities of the cells of the immune system. So they help the growth and differentiation of these cells. And they also help in the effector functions of these cells. And they help the migration and movement of the cells around the, uh, in the body. So what are those specific ones that help the migration called? Fine. Um, all right. So types of adaptive immune, immune responses, two types, right? Humoral immune system and then the cellular immune system. So humoral means that it's in the humor or it's just molecules in the blood or secretions. And those are formed by mainly the antibodies which are produced by B cells. And that's the reason it's called humoral uh, immune, uh, immunity. So I think the basic difference in humoral and cellular immune uh, response is the humoral immune uh, system or the antibodies have a target for extracellular microbes or toxins. So anything that once it enters the cell, the antibodies are useless. If the virus is inside the cell, if there is some kind of bacteria that's in, inside a macro, uh, phagocyte or macrophage, these antibodies cannot reach them and cannot target those things. So I think that's the big difference that you have to keep in mind, that the target is different for your moral immune system and the cellular immune system. So antibodies, what they, do they do? They neutralize the infectivity, and then they target the microbes or tag them for elimination. So basically, we think of antibodies as a weapon, but um, 
in that's just in theory and kind of to understand it at just the basic level. But antibodies do not kill these microbes. They either neutralize them and do not do not let them infect another cell, or they just tag them. And once they tag them, the killing is done by the other cells. So either it could be phagocytes, or they could say if it's a mast cell and the IgE is on the cell, then it's going to release the inflammatory mediators from the cell. So, uh, or they will, if, if these antibodies are inside a lumen, for example, IgA in the GI system, they are going to help to just uh, get those microbes from that lumen uh, flushed out. And then, you know, again, this is just a table showing the difference between humoral immunity and cell-mediated immunity. So again, going through. So extracellular microbes is the target for humoral, and then intracellular is for cell-mediated. But again, cell-mediated immunity has two specific um, pathways. So if those are in the phagocyto, uh, phagocytic uh, cycle, then basically they are, these microbes are going to be phagocytos in the macrophages or say neutrophils versus if there are intracellular microbes like viruses that are replicating in the cell. And so what happens for the uh, extracellular microbes, the B lymphocyte is the responding lymphocyte with its effector mechanism of antibody compared to say a phagocytos microbe where the helper T cells are the responding lymphocyte. And what they, they do is they are going to release cytokines to activate the macrophages to do the killing. Versus here, the antibodies are going to just block the infection by neutralization or going to help ask help from some of these cells. And then if it's an intracellular virus, for example, the, the responding lymphocyte is the cytotoxic T cell. It's going to um, cause cytotoxicity. So that's the effector mechanism. And it's going to kill the cell inside the, uh, using the cytotoxic T cell mechanism. All right, so another concept is active versus passive immunity. So uh, here the concept is that if you are infected or say you are given a vaccine, those microbes are looked at, uh, are present to the immune system as foreign and as a danger. So that's the mechanism that's going to be used by the immune system to get rid of these either the real microbe or the vaccine strain is it's going to have the C, uh, cytotoxic T cells or antibodies that are going to be activated. And once the immune system recovers, it's going to cause to form memory of that uh, infection. So it's a very specific response because it's adaptive, correct? So it's very specific for that organism or microbe. Compared to passive immunity where you are pretty much giving antibodies uh, to the individual. So once you put that in, it's definitely going to take care of the infection and you're going to recover, but there's no memory. Though the antibodies are very specific, sometimes very specific, sometimes non-specific, but it still can take care of the infection. So um, that's the difference between the active and passive immunity. So a few definitions um, as we go along. So what's an antigen? Uh, a substance that binds to a specific lymphocyte receptor. So whether it's a BCR or a TCR, the antigen has to have that specific structure. Compared to what's an immunogen, so the substances that not only bind to the lymphocyte receptor but cause an immune response is an immunogen. So there is a difference. There might be some antigens which are not capable of producing an immune response, and those are just antigens but not immunogens. Um, and so antibody, we just talked about it. And what's opsonization factors that enhance the phagocytosis by coating the microbe. So they just kind of tag and decorate the surface of the microbe uh, to show that they are flagged for, um, for killing by some other cells. So let's talk about some of the features of the adaptive immune system. So um, as you see in this table here, uh, the adaptive immune response is specific, diverse, it gives memory, and then there are some other uh, features, and we'll talk about each one. So what is specific? So um, the response is from the adaptive immune system is very specific for the distinct antigen. 
or for different portions of the single molecule. So it might be just a part of it, part of the antigen that to which the immune response is um, directed to. And that brings us to this another definition called epitopes or determinants. And it means the same thing. It's a part of antigen that are specifically recognized by individual lymphocytes. And we'll talk, we'll use this word a lot, epitope. What's diversity? So adaptive immune system has the ability to recognize a large number of antigens due to the variability in the structure of the um, antigen binding site of the lymphocyte receptor, whether again, BCR or the TCR, um, they have, there's a lot of diversity. And each, a clone is each subgroup of those lymphocytes that have different antigen binding receptors. So again, brings us, us up to a, another definition, something called lymphocyte repertoire. And basically what it means is, it's the total number of antigenic specificities of the lymphocyte. And it's close to 10 raised to 7 to 10 raised to 9 that we can respond to. So again, memory exposure of the immune system to a foreign antigen increases its ability to respond again to the same antigen in, uh, after the primary infection. So what's the secondary immune response? Uh, what's different about it? It's more rapid, it's larger, and it has improved quality. Um, and of course, it's more efficient. Clonal expansion, so this is, so once the TCR or BCR is bound to the antigen using its epitope, as we saw, there is proliferation of those specific lymphocytes. Um, and the whole clone has these lymphocytes, they have identical receptors on them. Uh, specialization, so again, if it's a virus or a fungus or some bacterial infection, the uh, immune response is very specific to that organism and based on what kind of microbe we are looking at, the um, response is going to be very specific and directed to that specific class of microbes. Um, and sometimes the same microbe can cause a different kind of response depending on where it is. So if it's extracellular, the antibodies to that virus can kill those, that virus versus once it's intracellular, those antibodies don't get to it, so cytotoxic T cells would be, uh, so that, uh, would be useful. So that specialization is important. Contraction or homeostasis. So the normal immune response wanes with time after the antigen stimulation, uh, stimulation reduce. And lymphocytes that do not get activation signals from antigens die by apoptosis. So overall, at the end of the, uh, once, the, um, once the infection reduces, the antigen reduces in amount, and that brings around the contraction or homeostasis of the immune response. Another feature is non-reactivity to self. What it means is basically you know, there is unresponsiveness uh, of the immune system to self-antigens. So either those self-reacting lymphocytes are eliminated so they are not in the circulation at all, they get taken care of during their development, versus they come into the circulation, but then they are inactivated. And some, if they are not inactivated, there are other regulatory cells which will help suppress the self-reactive lymphocytes. So this picture just basically shows how the primary and secondary immune response differs. So here's the picture showing, say there is a microbe called X, and that has a specific antigen called X, against which there is uh, immune response. So here are the clones, as we will call these. There are different clones that have different kinds of receptors. So these are B cells, so these are BCRs, that have different specificity. Um, so the one that that has the specificity for, and, uh, for the X, antigen X is going to give the immune response. So it's going to expand over time, so that's clonal expansion, and then it's going to differentiate into plasma cells, which are factories for the antibody, and that's going to release the antibody to kill the, the antigen X. And during that time, some of the B cells are going to make memory B cells, and these are going to survive, just going to stay there in the system. Say at another, like few weeks down, you get another antigen. So there is antigen X and Y, 
that the person got infected with, what's going to happen is there is going to be a secondary uh, immune response for X, but a primary immune response for Y. So that shows the specificity for each, each antigen. So the primary anti-Y response is going to be similar to the X primary response, but the secondary X response is going to be very, uh, it's going to be specific, but it's going to be rapid compared to this lower that it took a week or two to, uh, to occur. This just took a day or two or maybe a, you know, yeah, half a week or so, something like that. And then the response is way more efficient, more antibodies that are more uh, specialized or better quality uh, to take care of that response. And then more uh, memory cells produced, again, better quality. All right, so uh, classes of lymphocytes, we have already gone through this, T lymphocytes and different types of T lymphocytes. Um, and I think this is just a repetition of what we saw. T lymphocytes use antibodies. Um, helper T lymphocytes are going to release cytokines to, for their function. And based on what kind of uh, cytokine is released, it's going to uh, activate the macrophages, cause inflammation using some other cells, for example, mast cells or uh, they are going to cause um, activation of different kinds of TNB. Cytotoxic T cells interact with their target and release some enzymes that help in the killing of the infected cells. And then regulatory T cells are going to wait till the immune response has taken care of infection and then going to suppress the lymphocytes that no longer need to be active. Other cells of the immune system antigen-presenting cells, antigen-presenting cells, the most important ones being the dendritic cells and macrophages. These are the sentinels, which means they are present at the site of the infection in the tissue. Uh, the difference between the first two is the macrophages just stay there. They are stay put there and fight and release cytokines and keep that, those cytokines help to activate uh, kind of create an environment when, so when the other cells come in, so say neutrophils, they are going to look at those anti, uh, cytokines or chemokines where it's, it's going to help them uh, get activated versus some of the cytokines are going to help to activate the other types of effector T cells that come to the site of infection and they sort of take care of that. Compared to the dendritic cells, which are present at the site of the tissue site, but these travel, whereas microphage, macrophages just stay there, the dendritic cells take that message to the lymph nodes where they are going to activate the T cells and the B cells. And then the B cells, so naive B cells are not a good antigen presenting cell, but once they are activated, they have, uh, they make sure that they present those antigens on their surface and become good antigen presenting cells. And then there are effector cells, and we talked about these activated T cells, phagocytes, and some other leukocytes. So if you think of eosinophil cells or some others, those are, again, effector cells which can actually kill. They have enzymes to do the killing, right? So um, this basically just goes into what early immune response versus the late immune response. Early, the first line of defense is barriers in the skin, GI tract, uh, and respiratory tract. There is a continuous epithelium um, that helps to prevent any entry of any microbes. Um, and then that's the first line of defense. However, in the innate immune system, there are some cellular immune cells. So again, dendritic cells and macrophages, as we talked about, and some, and again, an antiviral defense is pro, uh, provided by some of these cytokines called interferons, which help and interfere with the viral replication. And so NK cells are another cellular feature of innate immune system that helps uh, in killing the viruses. And then the protein, uh, protein response is given by the complements and some other proteins. This is just showing what we already talked about. So for the, uh, the first stage of immune, adaptive immune response is recognition of antigen. Once it's recognized the, the, there is clonal, so there is lymphocyte activation, and those that are activated 
are gonna expand and then differentiate into the effector cells and then gonna produce the effector molecule that helps to eliminate the antigen and then once it's eliminated there's gonna be contraction of the immune response and some of them uh, forming memory. Um, and then the last concept here is uh, clonal selection, uh, which, may, which basically goes to show that the immune response, as we saw, has different, immune, the lymphocytes have different um, antigen specificity. So say there are like five different types of lymphocytes that are matured, um, they haven't looked at their antigen yet, so they are naive lymphocytes. And say one of them comes across a specific antigen or cognate antigen as we call it, it's going to bind to that ant uh, antigen receptor with its epitope. And once it does that, it's going to be activated. It's going to um, be selected, as we call it. So other, it's, what it means is it's going to be selected over the other uh, clones, and that's going to cause their expansion to get the antigen-specific immune response. And I think that's the last one. I'm going to try, but I don't know if this link will work. Oh, oh. maybe I wasn't if you want, if you click it while you're in the actual PowerPoint, we'll yeah. you go to the bottom and hit the little button on the lower right side. Where is that? Um, you can do it where you are right yeah, there on the top where it says concurrent slide. Hmm. Or you can go down to the bottom on that blue bar, um, up a little bit. I'm not sure if this thing works, but we'll try. Right here. Then try clicking on this. Okay. Sorry. You, I think it worked last time, but you it copy it into the browser. I. It might work. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh well. Sorry. It's just a nice video about selection. But I think that's about it. Very short chapter. Oh please go ahead. No, go ahead. Do you guys have access to the? Online version of the book? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in there, but I'm thinking. I need to buy it. Oh, uh, some, something went wrong. I don't know.